Hang my back. My guests today, my guests today, my guests today are Simon the Magpie and Horseman who are building instruments. And you might have seen Simon the Magpie online. If you're into music, you probably did. So when he decided to start his own company and build instruments, I was intrigued. I sent students to his channel quite a few times because he makes the wildest circuit bending projects that actually sound musical. You can circuit bend a lot of stuff, but it won't sound that exciting unless you have the ear for it. And I think that he actually has the ear for it. So I was intrigued when he said that he's going to build his own instruments. I saw it on Heinbach's channel on Instagram and then I right away messaged him and asked him, can we talk? In this conversation, we dive into the process of, first of all, why design your own instruments? And second of all, how you make it from just an idea into realizing something that can be professionally produced, reproduced. Because making one is nice, but making a few can be a bit tricky. Without further ado, I'm Roy, this is the Synth UX Academy, and this is Simon the Magpie and Horseman. He's always known more than me about everything. I'm also <laughs> an electronics teacher, actually. And I right. share like the same situation you have when you need to uh, go out of the classroom. I don't have a pod yet, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah. magpie pedals yeah. instead. Yeah. Uh, but we started hanging out maybe three months ago? More intensively? Yeah, yeah. Four months because I, I started a company now <laughs> and uh, sort of didn't really know what I really wanted to do content wise. Like, do I want this company to be all about my music? Like, is that going to be the, the livelihood or is it going to be aiming at becoming a YouTuber full time and making the money from there into this company? Uh, and I didn't like those two ideas very much. Uh, and I was in conversations with uh, Analog Weapon and JW Otto, huge shout out from Magpie Pirates Discord. Um, and we were talking a lot about sustainability and started a, like a podcast about sustainability and how to become sustainable as a creative person uh, building stuff for fun. Uh, and at the same, the, I think we just met up at like Coop or something or outside. Yeah, yeah we, we live uh, very, very close. Yeah, very close to each other. So we just run into each other. Yeah. And yeah. I was saying, like, I really want to make pedals now, like yeah. real pedals, real, real, not just circuit bending or, or doing stuff like that. I want to design everything from scratch, PCB and everything. You know how to do that. So let's do it. <laughs> yeah. And then we sort of started doing it. And uh, now we have two pedals and one more coming out soon. Yeah, very soon. It's right yeah. behind us. Yeah. It's very done. Uh, so this is trying to become sustainable, basically. Like how to make a living off of just, yeah, I don't even know how to summarize it. I think when we started out, you told me you wanted to do something new mm. and that's like super hard in the pedal world because uh, I mean, it's an old business base. Basically the first pedals came out, what, like hundred years ago. No, not really, but, <laughs> but yeah, super long ago. And, uh, and uh, people have done like the most things. Uh, so, so you like painted up a picture of, um, this would be cool we started to discuss like different approaches and i told you i think the first time now we found some more ideas but the first time i told you i have uh, one concept that i don't think is uh, uh, done before and that's like lunetta style pedals and uh, lunetta is uh, it's uh, stanley lunetta is an uh, like an artist from the 70s who took di digital ships and put audio into them. And they sounds sometimes beautiful, but most of the time uh, quite horrible. 
uh, but still it's a, a quite fun approach because everybody can do it. It's just to put audio in and try to connect stuff. It's uh, close to circuit bending, but we had mm. a goal picture sort of, so. We made yeah. one, one circuit bend thing, Oh, Yeah, of, of, of ourselves. We drank so much soda. Yeah. We came so happy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that one went very fast. The first design we did, basically, you just breadboarded it day one. Yeah. But, but hold on, you, you mentioned the Luneta. Was this the first thing you actually experimented with? Yeah. Uh, in pedal form, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, right. the fruits pedal is based on that. Yeah. Mm. Those, those ideas of, of like um, the Lunetta, if you Google it, it's nice. It's, it has its own forum and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do whatever. You can just, uh, the sport when you do Lunetta is to use only the digital ships and mm -hmm. nothing else. Th that makes it super simple and accessible. Uh, but if you're going to put guitar into it, it's, uh, you need to put uh, some icing on the cake, sort of like some extra stuff. But, um, and we wanted like harmonic voices and stuff that we know, I think. Yeah. In the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. We were trying out a bunch and I, I said, we need two Yeah. because you need to be able to get three notes out. At the same that's time. super fancy. Then all the problems start arise, and then uh, because we needed to do the like PCB and stuff. Uh, easy, we do all the PCBs in Easy Eda. Easy, I don't know how easy to EDA. pronounce it. Easy EDA. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So also very that's sort of DIY. Also, it feels like it feels DIY, even though it's not necessarily DIY at all. It's just very very accessible. Give yeah, DIY. It's key. definitely much easier easier than the other ones than uh, KiCad or Eagle, not to not to mention. Yeah, mm. yeah. Because I, I made PCBs when I was like twenty three in um, technical school, mm. uh, but I'm quite old right now, so <laughs> <laughs> that's like fifteen years ago. Uh, so uh, um, Simon is actually the PCB expert now, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> but I, I've never breadboarded before in my life. I've never done schematic stuff before either, and I most definitely never designed a PCB either. So, yeah. very very fast pacing, so to speak. Yeah. Since I have a teacher, it's not really a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Is but this because? Still, he, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Go ahead. You, you want to say? Uh, but still, we still uh, uh, like every time we design something, we put the uh, knobs uh, the backwards, ro the yeah, wrong yeah. way around, and we need to order new PCBs. But it doesn't matter because yeah. we <laughs> always order like uh, a very small batch of like test PCBs because we do sort of wacky stuff. It's yeah, kind of especially the the next pedal that is coming up is we're pushing actually limits that I don't think has been done before. No, with that one no. also. So that's very very cool. We want it all to be as new as possible. Like we don't want to clone unnecessarily, mm -hmm. even though we can take building blocks from what has already been done, obviously, and just put together like you do with a modular system or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you just build up new configurations of proven concepts. Yeah. But this, I don't even think is a proven concept, actually. I don't think so. I don't know. It's we can we can say what it is. Maybe it's. Uh... I don't know. When are you gonna release this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, probably in in I don't know five six weeks. Oh, uh, then we can say yeah, it. Yeah, course, for yeah. sure. Uh, it's a sequence delay with like a step sequencer for the delay time. Do you wanna Do you wanna maybe show it? Yeah. <laughs> hey. uh, so this is. Oh, should we have colors for this? Will you edit? I can I can also just put an image of it, or you can also share your screen and and show. We don't have anything on the computer. I never answered that, but you asked me to be able to sh screen share. But we don't have anything on. on no worries, that's good. Except is EDA, and that's on the other computer. Yeah. But um, so what this is is of course it's five steps on the sequencer because we're special. We don't want four or eight or anything like that. Uh, 
And it's all sequencing a PT, uh, whatever it's called, 2399. Yeah, yeah. So a very classic, like people think that, oh, everything has been done with this chip, but we've never seen anybody switch out the time knob for a, a sequence. So it's jumping in time values. It's like when you do like this on yeah. the time knob on a delay, it's very, very fun to do. But we do it in like quite a crude way. We just put the sequencer like straight in and... Uh, uh, that makes it like even it's not it's a really dirty sequencer the result is dirty dirty yeah. sequencer <laughs> but you can get like nice vibrato out of it but you can also yeah. get like a super long delay time which the pt2399 can't handle and stuff like that so yeah so it becomes very weird if it jumps from a, a really really high uh, or long delay time so it's super nasty lo-fi destroying the sound because it can't handle it and then you jump to a really really fast delay time like that in an instant it acts very very strange yeah <laughs> just doesn't know what to do with it Dude, i would love <laughs> to <all>. hear that <laughs> it's one of my favorite chips <laughs> We could maybe record like a small audio clip and you can put it in, in here. Awesome. Awesome. Maybe. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's definitely a very interesting idea to explore with this particular chip because a lot of people have been playing with it and also with the fact that it's it can distort. Uh, I'm not sure if the last uh, uh, the if the strega from make noise is going all the way to distortion there. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if they're using it, but I'm I think they are. But anyway, the the whole idea of uh, uh, Befaco, for instance, had their uh, have their uh, uh, dis delay distortion kind of thing. That as soon as you go beyond twelve o'clock, it starts mm. distorting, and you get these beautiful, beautiful clicks and pops that you can't really get anywhere else. Yeah. You don't even need to put anything into it. You just turn it, and and you may and it makes these really wacky sounds. Um, but it's interesting to say why don't we sequence this? And then have five steps because this will always be more interesting. I would encourage actually anyone listening to just try to make sequencers of only uh, odd numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I you agree. can make really, yeah, you can make really interesting uh, um, uh, cross rhythms like that. And by design, if you're creating something like this, then you're sort of encouraging or like pushing people to play that, and you can get really interesting results. Uh, if you're looking for the unconventional, for the not done yet, then this will be a good place to to start exploring. <laughs> well, it is also... Sorry for interrupting, but when it comes to going into uncharted territory, uh, the one of the most inspiring things, at least in my opinion at the moment, is uh, to be restrained to this size of a box. Mm -hmm. and stuff like 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 very basic restraints like we can't do a look mom no computer huge a thousand yeah. oscillators thing and call that a product that we can produce more than one off of and, and actually get in the hands of users mm -hmm. we need it to be we need to package it i guess yeah. is what i'm saying and this is actually pretty maxed out you can't uh, yeah like we can't a, really fit anything more. on the pcb no, maybe not. You, you can maybe no, show. Can, gonna you show, can maybe no. turn it around and show it. Not, not going to yeah, show. Of course. No, it's <laughs> just super just secret. So we, we can fit something. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we show in black and white because that's really, really cool. But this is, uh, can you see good? Yeah. Uh, I cannot hear you, but I can, I can see. <laughs> I can translate. <laughs> now, I, I want to say that since I have no prior experience with designing a PCB whatsoever, I might be doing things that other people are not doing. Yes, maybe. Simon likes to put all the resistors on a row and all that. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, that, that's an idea with that because um, Simon is the poor guy who has to solder all this stuff together. And it's much easier for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If yeah, I just yeah. put all the resistors in one row at the top of the entire PCB, then I can just do that first yeah <laughs> i would argue that this is a very good design decision if you're making it for yourself to to build and also if you're creating mm. a diy kit for someone else who's just starting out 
this is this is a design decision internally to say well let's just put all the resistors there because DIY in general you start yeah. with the resistors and then the like, same, same with camps and everything mm -hmm. yeah and he, I, he puts them in like value order yeah, as well, yeah. So. I, yeah. Do, I don't write you know like the R R1 R2 R3 instead I write like 100k and then I mark it so all of these are 100k fantastic <laughs> Very smart, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, if if you're if you're looking for efficiency and when you're doing DIY, it's basically like building Lego. I actually wanted to interview. I know someone from Lego, and I wanted to interview the people who design the the manuals because yeah. I want to learn how Begin they today. make these decisions. Because I think that a lot of DIYers, or not DIYers, but the people who manufacture DIY kits could learn quite a bit from the way that they communicate things, the way that they, yeah, it's just, it can be really frustrating to work with at times with DIY kits. And the way that Lego orders uh, put uh, stuff in the bags in a uh, certain order, mm -hmm. they're like brilliant because mm -hmm. you, do, you see no logic in it when you open them up, but when you start building, you're like, okay, so this is uh, to make it easier for me to find stuff like yeah. yeah yeah and having separate books so yeah. like you know i'm now focused on that and it's also i did a bit of research into that and the reason that they would say this box is for five to seven and this box is for five to nine and like how how do you measure this how do you define and apparently they actually do a lot of research into the amount of um focus a kid could have yeah, okay. but also the complexity yeah. of like when you when like when we look at an orientation of something in our age yeah. when we when when something is flipped we right away realize oh it's flipped and a five-year-old doesn't really understand it oh. or i don't really know exactly the ages but it, it, there there is something with the way that we understand orientation that kids don't really understand even on a like you talk to them they're like little persons and you think yeah you actually get this and they don't really see what you're seeing ah oh, hmm. the special or what the word is the maybe everyone who makes uh, diy kits should aim towards kids maybe that's a good starting point. yeah yeah so aiming for yeah. five-year-olds that was the thing when when i started out with electronics uh, the, that was like maybe uh, oh uh, 22 years ago uh, it was super inaccessible. Uh, you didn't have Arduino. You, you you needed to build your own programmers and stuff. And it was like the DIY scene was like super small. Uh, but it got much better. But I think it can be better, even better than it, it's right now. Or I, I completely agree. I think that one of the most challenging things with DIY is not really the build itself. But uh, first of all, troubleshooting it, which yeah, would be amazing true. if companies would start just making videos of like the mm. general things you might expect. Like you built this oscillator and you can tune it or even without troubleshooting, just like tuning, I would really want to see a video, especially with more complex DIYs. How do I tune this? Show me how you do it. Because looking at these block diagrams sometimes can be, first of all, it's very overwhelming. And the second thing is you don't really know, did I get it? And maybe I'm doing something wrong. Where am I pressing here? What am I clicking? It's, it's not, I'm not really getting the result. And I've been doing this for an hour and a half. Yeah. Hmm. And I, I think, tell, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I always tell my students, uh, they're so worried when they're going to test a, a small, they have done something on breadboard and they want to test it out. And they're telling me like, this won't work. And then I tell them like, I've done this for so many years. And when I do things, 50% of the time, it doesn't work. It's like you have so high percentage of failure when it comes to electronics, because it's stuff you can't see. A lot of the time. So mm -hmm. step one, lower your expectations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ex uh, expect to fail. Yeah. Yeah. That should be step one on, yeah. on every manual of yeah. every DIY kit. Yeah. <laughs> and in life. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't need to mention that uh, failure is part of the process, especially when you're tinkering with electronics and, and programming. 
That's why I like circuit bending. Because then, then you really the expect the failure. <laughs> failure is part of the process. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe let's let's go back to this for a second. Um, so, uh, Simon, when did you start with the whole uh, tinkering with electronics? I think 2015, maybe. It might be. I don't know why I'm looking at you as if you know. I think it was story. Right. <laughs> the same time we uh, met each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sort of. And so that's that may be true. Yeah. Yeah. What was, that was the first my, uh, two toys? They're actually up there, but that's going to be really, really hard, both both to reach and to show. Okay. But it was my father-in-law had a soldering iron, and a colleague of mine who is the called Base Master Andreas yeah. is in a lot of videos. Base, we used to work together. Uh, he showed me like a YouTube video of uh, circuit bending, some random like this is the crazy sounds. Wouldn't this be really cool? And he was talking about it, and I, I went home and did it instead. Uh, and then at the same time, I had this huge pedal interest. Like I had a collection of guitar pedals that I played since through just for making music and stuff. So then I started circuit bending the cheaper guitar pedals because why not? I didn't have many toys to open up, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then... I think I just started filming that, but I didn't talk on camera for like one or two years. I'm very Swedish, so it was weird to talk English. Felt uncomfortable. I right. <laughs> And then I don't know. Then I just continued doing stuff, but I stopped making circuit bending content because it wasn't as it, it's hard to make. Um, soldering entertainment, I guess, entertaining. Yeah, it's not like... Uh, it's uh, not very fun. Uh, like painting a Bob Ross picture and things. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, if he was circuit bending, yeah. it would be very nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. but, but it's very, very hard to, to make that entertaining. And it has to be entertaining for me because I'm the one who edits. Like the experience of watching back what I have done has to be fun. Otherwise, I will not edit because it's not fun to watch it. It's just, okay. It's just, uh. So that's yeah. a big part of that. Right. So then when, uh, when you're looking at the point where you started, I mean, in 2017, you already had some products or were they not products? Never before, like actual products. What I had was a specific toy that I converted into a guitar pedal, and I made a handful. Right. And I think okay. they they all broke. I'm oh. sorry if anyone bought those. I'm sorry. <laughs> like the DS1, the the Boss uh, distortion pedal. I, I I never really sold those at all. No. Like I, I no I I never maybe I sold like a few to people that really asked me online or stuff like that. And I think I posted telephone microphones yeah. on Facebook yeah. Yeah. and tried to sell that. That's kind of hype now in Sweden. A it lot is? of people do it on Facebook now. They sell I started telephone it. Then I quit microphones. <laughs> this is so, you convert an old school telephone in so you can sing through it. You just yeah. put a jack, jack on it. Two yeah. solderings. Very easy to do. Good product idea, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a, a student of mine uh, built uh, two years ago something really wacky with, uh, with a telephone, with an old telephone. I know the experience. It can be fun. Huh? But I've never uh, sold mods, I guess, is right. where I, what I was getting to. Not really, actually. I don't see the point. So we... what does it take to take it from, from a point where you're just playing around with electronics and now you're really building a sustainable business from it? It takes a good teacher. <laughs> do you have to do it with a teacher? Like, how would you do it without a teacher? I uh, probably couldn't. I, I think a lot of people I talk with uh, on the internet, uh, actually, the, the uh, bigger part of them don't have an electronics education. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just like super interested, like with the PT2399 business, the, the guys who made like Hamlet, uh, for instance, which is a DOI pedal. Um, he's... Uh, I believe not educated, but like super smart, smart because he has, um, he has a big interest. 
and I mean uh, the part when we invented the pedal was the the easy part. I just want to retract my statement. Yeah, you don't need a teacher, but I need a friend. Yeah, <laughs> you need a friend actually. I need a friend too, <laughs> because because like inventing the stuff isn't hard. I, I mean, you have all these materials online, and then you can try it out, and you can change stuff. Uh, what I would like to see is like a super modular uh, DIY kit for uh, popular pedals, because when you build a pedal pedal from a kit, um, you g- you get the option to. Uh, alter certain things but Mm. if they put out a DIY kit uh, with like jumpers and sockets Mm. you could look like do a uh, I don't know the English word laboration like a lab yeah lab kit that Mm. would be super cool because that's really what it is all about Uh, uh, I mean we make uh, the bare bones for for the stuff we do, but then we s- you sit and test stuff out. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean, there are a few clever people trying to solve this thing now. Uh, I had a conversation with Gertz from Erica since, and he's really like he stopped doing DIY and he's trying to look for a way to make it more educational. Because it felt like years ago, it was about like you get the circuit, you learn how to do it, and now it's sort of like lego but the boring kind of lego you just put all the components in it's working and that's it and he's like but where is the education in this and what you're referring to here is a bit more on the education uh side of it like we're not giving you uh, a complete thing that we design we design an experience for you so you'll be able to design something on your own and it also goes back to what you said at the beginning that uh, um, all these building blocks are already out there uh the point that this uh, episode is going to be released, there is already the episode of uh, Three Tom Modular uh, out, and he's mentioning something really interesting. He says, "I'm not really even working with any breadboards. I am just working with building blocks. I design myself yeah. a VCA. Uh, I designed a, a, um, a filter. I designed a, a wave folder, for instance, and these are tested, and I know that they work." Now when I need to create something, I just patch these things, experiment with them, and then come up with a new design. And I basically copy-paste these building blocks to create something that is beyond that. I don't know, I don't know if you know his work, but he made this crazy um, MS-22 filter, uh, which is not really <laughs> nothing like the MS-20 filter. Uh, it's like a 4 HP with modulation matrix, four stacked PCBs that I think only he can actually figure out. <laughs> it's insane. It's absolutely insane. He really pushed the comp- the boundaries of like using the the notion of having two filters together and just with a few switches and very clever electronics in the back, he made something that is really unique for, for what it is. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. We do the same thing, don't we? We sort of did it yeah. for, for this one. This pedal is going to be called Bubbles. Okay. Uh, just so we have marketing. Now we do some marketing. Bubbles is a very good pedal. Buy it. Nice. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we did it uh, not on breadboard. We did it. We actually did it pretty weirdly, though. He, you had a Lunetta Baby 8 sequencer. Baby 10. Yeah. Baby 10 yeah. sequencer. Mm-hmm. And then we had a, a existing guitar pedal with the PT. In yeah. it. And, and then we so we just put a jack where the time knob is Clever. on the ship and we t- took his sequencer and that way we were able to check the voltage that it was able yeah. to take what's happening and yeah. stuff and we have our uh, we use the same lfo almost all the time not all the time we only have three pedals but it doesn't have an lfo no but but when we want the lfo we have a proven yeah, yeah, yeah. like lfo mm-hmm. concept yeah so exactly yeah. we we have the in ecda when you have done a mm-hmm. thing in ECEDA, then if you want to use that thing for something in the future, you can go back to that project mm-hmm. and copy yeah. paste. It's, it's copy a pretty paste. cumbersome yeah. uh, process that I was so surprised how cumbersome it is. But yeah, you can do it. Like what I uh, just a side note on this. I, I thought, you know, coming from Adobe programs, you just copy paste stuff. It just works. And with them, it's like you have the circuit and you have the PCB design. And they're, they're connected in the same file. But if you now just copy-paste, you can't really copy-paste both of them. 
So no, you have no, to no. create sort of a yeah, uh, yeah, thing that is a copy pasteable thing. Very weird. But we, we still never... we don't want to avoid the happy accidents though. No, like, no, we no. still uh, because that's in. I guess breadboarding is like a controlled happy accident environment. Yeah. What happens if I do like this? Yeah. But when we have something on a PCB, there's still a lot of room for happy accidents. Yes, yes, of course. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you do everything wrong in the <laughs> when you design the PCB. <laughs> this is not this was not planned to be like this. <laughs> it's kind of nice though, right? Can we save that on yeah. a switch? And we <laughs> Can switch between. I think that that's uh, that's the thing with uh, like if if you could put out like the DIY kits with like uh, uh, opportunities beyond like the original pedal, uh, you need to um, create like happy accidents that are controllable because sometimes I'm, I come here to the studio workplace and uh, Simon has like has circuit bent one of our own pedals. Wow. And it sounds super nice, but sometimes it's really hard to like uh, replicate the circuit bending quality, um, and that's that's uh, one of his big talents, of course, because uh, when he circuit bend stuff, stuff sounds awesome. When I do it, they just sound crap. But um, that's a fine line between experimenting and like. We need to replicate this so it does the same thing all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we we're saying, to contain it within yeah. this is supposed to yeah. be a, an actual product. Yeah, we want to be able to make more than one unit to be yeah. able to to actually sell them, so yeah. people can expect to get the same thing. But is I don't know, it, yeah. an inspiring breadboard. Is that essentially what you're saying? Can I like an inspo breadboard? Yeah, because you, you know me. I can I say it out loud. I hate breadboarding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's very uh, it's, it's tiring for all of the senses, I guess. Yeah, because it's it, dizzying just looking at all of the holes and what did I do wrong? Yeah, and you try you you start out and you you're thinking like this time I'm gonna do it super neat so it's nice to work with. And uh, one hour later, it's cables everywhere. <laughs> we can show real fast. Mm -hmm. I have. Oh, please do. Is this this is a really small one? Is that the crazy shift one? This is an oscillator, I think. Yeah. No, I think it's the. Okay, maybe it is. I don't know. Like it never looks nice. It's a dropping. I, I see your point. I do see the aesthetics <laughs> in this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks yeah. really, really cool. It's really, really cool, but it doesn't look like. Uh, it, yeah, it doesn't look cool when you're gonna uh, translate that into a schematic or no. <laughs> something. No, yeah. I, I actually really admire people like Mang Chi, who like you see his breadboards are just insane. And there is actually yeah. this guy on YouTube who builds whole computers on breadboards. Shit. Yeah, insane, insane. Yeah. And he and he runs workshops like this. He gives you like he even has his specific breadboards that he vouched for because he says most of them are shit. Um, yeah, I find it fascinating the the whole like how people uh, dive into a, a a certain thing and make it into way more than a hobby that they get into the nitty gritty details of uh, a craft. Mm. Yeah, and, but I guess uh, it depends on the end goal as well. As you're saying, this person has uh, workshops. So mm -hmm. the end goal is to be breadboarding as awesomely as possible. Mm -hmm. Our end goal is to have something in a square format. Mm -hmm. So we, we cannot get too lost on, no, on no, the breadboard no. side of things because we know that we have to get it away from the breadboard yeah. Yeah. at some point. Yeah, we're not super rich so we can't like develop no. stuff forever either we yeah <laughs> they, need to, <laughs> they need to get out there. <laughs> Con yeah. constraints are really important uh, i think that that's one of the main things that you get also in school like you have uh, a semester or a block to work on a um on a project and if your teachers knows what they're doing, then they give you these even smaller incremental parts where you grow 
through the process. If you don't have these, then these limit like without limitations, it's super hard to get to somewhere. Yeah. And actually, I, I, I just started now the Discord server for the CNTUX Academy. And the first thing that people who don't really have any experience ask is, where do I start? And the first thing I say is, you need to answer these questions. Like, what is your goal? Where do you want to, where, what do you imagine that you would have? So I'll give you a bit of a direction to where to, where to play. It's kind of like a desert. You're going in, like, there's like 360 degrees you could go to. Anywhere can be interesting. Give me a pin like the side I want to go there like I think this is really cool I think this is really inspiring and based on that you can start making smaller goals to reach that thing otherwise uh, yeah you can just walk in circles in the desert and not really get anywhere it can be really frustrating yeah for us I guess to keep it within the analogy at some point we need to find water in, yeah in yeah that's it yeah otherwise we're screwed yeah. <laughs> yeah, because even if you're experienced and stuff, uh, that inspiration or like goal, it's even harder, I think, for us because we we do like stuff. We have a goal picture, but we want to invent new stuff. And that's shaky. I mean, sometimes we invent stuff that's totally shit and you have to throw it away. Yeah. Or we turn that into a kit. You know, and... yeah. <laughs> the bin, <laughs> bin kits. Bin kits. Bin yeah. Kit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing with like the DIY kits. Uh, everybody is so obsessed, like put this uh, stuff in these small boxes. Mm. And, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> and all the pedals I built in my life, the hardest part is to get it into the box uh, because it's. Um, I mean, I, I don't know why why people don't build like bigger kits uh, because if you're gonna do like, but I think experimenting. Sorry and stuff, for yeah. for interrupting, but I think that uh, building a pedal board has become sort of like building yeah, a modular yeah. system mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a sense. Yeah. So that's exactly like it is with two yeah. HP modules exploding, right? Everyone yeah. wants two HP modules because you want to have as much as possible in as small of a space as possible. And funny enough, when you get a, a two HP uh, kit or like a box, the, the lunch box they released, it has a lot of blank panels in between. So you'll be able to actually play it. Otherwise, it's too cramped. <laughs> you can't get, <laughs> yeah. your fingers. Yeah. yeah, no, but it's... Yeah, it, 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 yeah. It's, it's like with the uh, tiny mini pedals uh, yeah. if you put them together and you're gonna try to uh, yeah, stomp on the foot switch you need yeah. to use your like smallest toe to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need those special shoes <laughs> where you one yeah maybe could be, that's a good idea pedal shoes pedal shoes yeah <laughs> well actually pedal shoes are the i think converse if you're thinking about 90s pictures yeah you have these yeah. converse stomp boxing yeah. and yeah but now we have like the things you put on the stomper thingy you know yeah but the problem like with converter. those are if you put them on this uh on the foot switch every pedal builder puts the lead with by the foot switch oh, so you, you can can't see if it's, see on, if it's or on or off, off. Mm -hmm. because it's yeah so that's a that's a design problem yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 that that needs to be solved here you go yeah. you guys are building uh not by us <laughs> <laughs> we do we do fun things <laughs> So yeah. I, ha I have the pedal poppers. Like I, I have an actual thing that should be a product, in my opinion. You know, like we did the cloud. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I have them over here. I'm gonna show you. Like the fact that this doesn't exist is mind-boggling to me. So where you put the foot switch, there's always like a plastic ring. You know, mm -hmm. it's usually white, and mm -hmm. then it's the uh, Mutter. I don't know what mutter is called. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, like a but washer. I've... Yeah, yeah, like a washer. I figured that you can design pretty washers. So oh, this cool. It's a, a cloud. You need to change the color. So... No, it's... Yeah, no, but I see it. Yeah, so it's a cloud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can make stars or hearts or whatever. So I believe that this is a thing that should be next to like picks or whatever in music stores. And you can just buy a handful of these and put on your pedals. 
to make your pedals pop. So I think pedal poppers. This is a fantastic idea. And I would even re refer to Bifaco. What Bifaco did, they created these washers um, that are in color. You have the mm -hmm. black, yeah, yeah, yeah. red, and... But just the mutter, exactly. Yeah. Not, yeah, the nut. Yeah, the nut. That, yeah not yeah, the exactly. washer, but the nut. Yeah. So you're now just saying, let's just have modular uh, uh, washers, like in yeah, different yeah. colors, different shapes. Then you can and... make, uh, exactly. You have mm -hmm. more leeway to play around with than yeah. just the nut, because that's always nut shaped. Yeah. Funny word to say, not shape. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's, 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 the that's the, the only idea. issue is like mass producing, because I could release this. I could, I could release this now on my web shop, but I 3D print ours, mm -hmm. which takes a lot of time mm -hmm. to 3D print. Uh, so they would be way too expensive. And if I were to release this, uh, that idea is unpatentable. So big brands could just start mass producing this way, way cheaper in like nylon or something. Like I don't know. Beer in your washer. Yeah, the beer in your washer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt Behringer is going to go that path, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you, you never know. <laughs> they just can't help themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they see a good idea. <laughs> they just can't help themselves. <laughs> no, but I, I believe, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. But it, for our products, it's uh, like, um, you know, you get like almost gift baskets with pedals these days, but we don't have those gifts baskets baskets or uh, nice stuff to give out, but we have uh, washers, nice washers. And oh, we you have some weird couple... thing that uh, helps you turn the... Um, yeah, 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 selector knobs and 3D printer is a very good investment actually. Mm -hmm. uh, for designing, also, we use the 3D printer to make the uh, the drill mails, <laughs> drill tem templates. Yeah, like yeah. templates for all the holes and stuff. So I can just take a print screen of the uh, circuit in ECEDA, put that into a CAD, uh, and make a 3D printed thing with mm -hmm. just markings for all of the holes so it's very very easy to to do stuff like that with the 3d printer as well yeah and most designs are made like um uh, that we don't have to paint them uh simon is working with like yeah, yeah. hammer <laughs> yeah you're you're like it is embossed into the metal yeah yeah like, how do you do that you just hammer you buy uh, like stamps. stamps. I think it's called stamps. Yeah. Like it's metal for stamps. It's yeah. for jewelry. People who make uh, jewelry, like DIY jewelry. Right. So you you can get create like a flamingo one or a heart one or that. That's why it's so fun for uh, if we call the first petal fruits. If you show a picture now of fruits, for example, you can both see that the washers are pink because uh, they're 3D printed. And I also designed and 3D printed the lead holders, like where we put the LEDs. Those are also 3D printed, so we can make funny designs for those as well. Mm. Have like a star. No, it is not in color. Oh. But, should, should, should. Yeah, we, no. <laughs> no, but I, uh, that's OK. We'll just we'll put an image there. Yeah, yeah, but reference for you. So this one is star shape, Yeah. because I can do that. And then yeah. I have a stamp up here uh, for jewelry that is a star shape. So star and star are connected. Oh my God. Cool, cool. cool. Uh, and things like that. Since it's called fruits, we have a fruit slice on it. And then when you introduce more voices, it's a knife and fork. Because I don't know, that makes sense yes. in my mind. It made if sense. We're <laughs> talking about, if we're talking about constraints, that's also a very interesting constraint to, to add to your... Uh, to, to the project, you're basically saying, well, I am hammering these and there is a limited amount of shapes that I could use. So mm. this informs also the design decisions, even the naming of the module, because you actually have these and you don't have any other. Yeah, I mean, we have the letters, so we could call them whatever, but it would be super annoying to write out very like, long words. Super long or, words. Yeah, because yeah. it's really hard to hammer for like five hours. I think all pedal manufacturers need to think about stuff like this because 
uh, even if because uh, they're all ugly. <laughs> Yeah, just well, say it as it is. <laughs> but, Depends. Yeah. There are some really beautiful ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I lied <laughs> or joked. I but guess. but all handmade pedals pedals are pretty expensive, but still even there's a lot of expenses. So uh, you need to um, put down uh, methods to uh, minimize the work hours yeah. for each pedal. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm. I want to learn more about the the design process. So let's say that you have now we we figured out the electronics. You worked on the electronics. You came up with the PCB design. You sent it to wherever, and you got it back, and it's working, and you're super excited. What then? How we like what sort are the of other simultaneously? Steps? We do it at the same time. So we're, we're designing the like how it's going to look at the same time. I would yeah. say as we are prototyping and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, since we have those types of constraints, then the naming um, is for the first for fruits. It's kind of weird, but that was me sitting down and thinking of things that are in plural because it's three voices. So I thought I w- wanted to name it. I don't know if we, if we call it something early on, but I wanted it to be something that is three. So like trident or mm. the four horsemen <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> something like that. Uh, and then I was, uh, uh, since it's got all the colorful knobs, on it because I really, really wanted to have that pretty early on, but one big knob. And that's shout out to Mantic for doing um, just plain steel boxes with colorful knobs on. And shout out to Drolo for doing pedals with just one big knob because it looks sort of wacky, but it made sense for fruits since we have one main oscillator to have a big one. Yeah. And then I sort of started thinking that, oh, this looks yummy. And then I thought it was kind of fruity with all the colors, I guess. So it just became fruits. I also think the thing you're describing now is like the design process is in your head, isn't it? Yeah, like, basically. Uh, it's, it's not... But you have to put it out on the, yeah, of course. like in the but, physical but, but space. But you don't do any pro- program design No, no, stuff, we don't do or... anything in the computer and no. it's anything like that. It's in, in the minds, in conversation and on uh, just physical, yeah. I guess. So just buying a bunch of different knobs, different sizes of boxes to see, does it fit in this enclosure or will we have to have a bigger enclosure? Uh, Does it, um, yeah, how will it even fit uh, like this on the box? Like the row of knobs, can we fit six knobs like this? Like, does that make sense on the PCB to the box? Okay, we can do that like this. What sizes then can we have on knobs? Okay, what design of knobs exists in this size? So it's it's all about limitations in that way. Yeah. Um, and bubbles is we call it toad first because we call it lo-fi jumping delay because it's jumping in between. But then I just it said bubbles to myself, and then I messaged you. Yeah. Like it. But should be called bubbles. It makes so much sense because it's like bubbles of audio going yeah. pop, pop, pop. I rarely say no if it's not a design decision that will make it impossible to realize in electronics or something like that. But otherwise, I don't know. I think we do the electronics. It's a quite a fast process, and then it's quite a long process before we can put out the product, isn't it? Yeah, like a couple of, but mainly because we have to order PCBs, like yeah, you a couple need to of times order stuff, and uh, yeah, and you need to get the parts. It's really hard to get parts now in Sweden. Yeah, um, and you need to do a lot of stuff you need to do the drill templates and test them out and like it's all these small processes yeah yeah there's a lot of steps yeah involved uh so during all of those steps yeah. solutions to all kinds of issues arise and becomes part of the design but it's also like when, when you uh, so in the fruits we sort of had the books first and then came the name in the case of bubbles Today is the first day that I show you what yeah. I have thought about. Um, we have the, the word bubbles or the name bubbles, and we have the sound 
that is the the bubbles like the effect but how does bubbles translate into a, a design that is visually very bubbly well the like mermaid um color scheme so pink purple and cyan blue and tur- turquoise turquoise mm-hmm. like those colors uh, and also transparent knobs because it gives also extra extra bubbles and since we 3d print all the washers and when you have tra- transparent knobs maybe i can take a picture of this and show you so you can see zoomed in because it's going to be really hard to show on cam but there's a leeway between where the knob where the pot ends and where the top of the knob is and it's transparent all the way up there so you can 3d print or just cut out yourself a tiny piece of plastic in the color that you want and put it in there so it's on top of the the pot but inside the knob and then if you do a washer underneath the knob also in the same color it looks as though it's completely transparent but inside of it is this color thing i don't know really how to say it yeah but it becomes like a cool cool uh, effect in my opinion but that that, uh, super excitement you talked about uh, when you get the uh, like uh, pcb and try it out i think that comes uh, first when it's everything is done when you have like the finished pedal because it's another feeling to play a finished pedal than to play a PCB with loose knobs. Yeah, more. And you, you sit there. And like, but not even then, uh, <laughs> since <with> our... <laughs> it's all abysmal of disappointment. You know what I mean? Since our end goal is not to have one functioning unit. Like, that's really, really great if that's yeah. what you want for yourself. Yeah. But we want to make at least 10 or 20 in a batch. So mm-hmm. when all of those are done, tested problems are solved with a few of them most likely and then they are when all of them are next to each other then yeah maybe super yeah. exciting and not only then but when <laughs> 10 people actually bought them, <laughs> yeah when people buy them yeah. and we don't but even then, have them anymore <laughs> <laughs> but then there is another project coming in and we still didn't finish yeah. it so yeah. it. Yeah. it's so fun why oh why (laughs) well i mean i'm sure that there are little wins in this otherwise you wouldn't do it of course yeah and when Um, we we tie it back to bob ross it's all of the the happy little tree that that's like one part of that's when we finished the pcb and bob ross is super happy when he did that happy little tree but the happy little tree needs a friend so we need to solve the box design you know that's the friend of the tree so it's all of these tiny wins or smaller wins yeah. within the journey yeah. in the desert i yeah. guess and i think it's we both like, agree that this is really rewarding this this whole journey is really awesome yeah 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 and especially I, since yeah. doing it yourself means that we can run around naked if we want to <laughs> <laughs> and, and do do whatever in the meantime you know? and, and that is always fun hey i wanted to ask you a last question before we finish um like now that you know all this stuff that you've discovered in the last i mean you've been circuit bending bending for years and in the last few months also like really designing your own products if you would give an advice for someone who is just starting out now they're like 20 year old they look at you they really look up to you and you're like how, where should I start? Like with all your experience now, what would you tell them? Do you want Don't to do panic. The, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> right. like a two piece answer. Like you first. Uh, you first. Okay. I don't okay, have any okay. answer. Uh, build yourself a fuspel. Because I rem- still remember the moment I built my first fuss pedal into a plastic foot switch and I blasted full volume and I was so happy. And I still search for that sound, but I will never find it because I built the same first spell a hundred times, but it was so cool. I'm going to be way more, uh, not political, but like uh, up here. Stop watching so much YouTube and just start doing stuff instead. People are like over consuming what other people are doing rather than doing themselves. Yeah, that's true. Like in yeah. a generational because when we grew up or more when you grew up but also when i grew up there wasn't these platforms where you could find 
all the knowledge very uh, accessibly. I don't know if that's a word, but everything is super accessible, which is a really, really, really good thing. But for us, we had to do everything ourselves. If it goes into making music as well, I had to figure out the DAW myself to be able to produce a kick drum and a snare drum. And those hours are very, very valuable. So don't rush things, just do and fail a lot uh, instead of uh, relying on that all the solutions are already being given to you, I guess.